Falcha Awali my friend, Jay here, welcome back to our legends. In today's video we are going to take a look at the history of Balahai Castle in County Kerry, its legends of mermaids and a sea king as well as other spooky goings on. But before we begin, if you enjoy this video please hit the like button, leave us a comment telling us what you think or even share your own stories and subscribe if you wish to see more of our videos. So without any further delay, let's dive right in. The Cantonal family became established in Balahaig during the 13th century. Originally Normans, they had arrived in England and fought in the Battle of Hastings. In 1169, a descendant, William Cantillon, travelled to Ireland with the Anglo-Norman invaders, and one of his children, Timothy, is said to have constructed the castle of Balahaig in the 13th century. It was probably first built of timber, with successive members of the family then adding a simple tower house built of stone. The Cantillons married and united with the dominant Irish families, becoming a powerful force in County Kerry and holding various senior positions such as the Sheriff of Kerry. The castle of Balahaig being built overlooking the Atlantic Ocean afforded the Cantillons plenty of opportunity to explore the Kerry coastline. Legend relates that it was on one such exploration that one of the young Cantillion men met a mermaid named Derfulla, the daughter of a sea king, who quickly fell in love with him. She gave up her immortality and untold wealth to spend just one human life with her man. After her death, she was buried in the Cantillion's family graveyard on the shoreline, just below the castle. Her father, the sea king, yearned to have his daughter's grave near him, and so, as the story goes, in a moment of rage, he set gnawing white-tooted waves to cut the roots of the graveyard and sink it into the deep. Later, as time went on, the king learned Durfla had borne several children to the Cantillons. He pledged that his mermen would bury her descendants in the graveyard, now at the bottom of the ocean, until the next human eye saw his sea folk at their task. From then, whenever a member of the Cantillon family died, their coffin was brought down to the beach below the castle and laid out on the sand in reach of the tide. The mourners then withdrew, leaving the mermen to do their work. By the following morning, the coffin was gone, conveyed to the ancient Cantillion family tomb beneath the waves. And this continued for several centuries until a curious County Clare man named Connor Crow who had married into the Cantillion family, believed the coffins were merely being carried out by the tide and lost to the depths of the Atlantic. So following the death of Mr. Florence Cantillon and the depositing of his coffin on the Balahaig Strand, Crow hid himself in some rocks that overlooked the white pebbly beach. Long past midnight, he heard the sound of many voices, which gradually became stronger above the heavy and monotonous roll of the sea. The voices grew louder as it seemed to approach the beach, then fell away into a low wail. In the dim light, mysterious looking figures emerged from the sea and surrounded the coffin, which they launched into the water and pushed under the waves. In witnessing this, Connor Crow broke the Sea King's promise, and so ended the mermen's work of burying the Cantillons below the sea. Local fishermen still declare they have seen the ruined walls of an old chapel beneath them in the water, and the flick of the Sea King's tail in the waves as he returns from visiting his daughter's grave. The intrigues of Balahaig do not end here. In 1556, Roger Cantillon married Elizabeth Stuart, a member of the Scottish royal family. The Cantillons remained strongly allied with the Stuart kings of England, Scotland and Ireland. Roger and Elizabeth's grandsons, Valentine Cantillon, strongly supported King Charles I and in the middle of the 17th century went to England to aid him. On the 30th of January 1649, Charles lost his head under the executioner's axe, and the Cantillons subsequently lost their Balahaig estate in the Cromwellian land confiscations. 
The next owner of Balahaig was Colonel David Crosby, Governor of Kerry. The Crosbys built a long, low, thatched house that faced onto a courtyard, in a corner of which was the old Cantillion House. It was in this tower that Thomas Crosby placed 12 large chests of silver bullion that had been rescued from the Danish East Indian man, Golden Lion. The vessel had been lured into Balahaig Bay and despite the efforts of their captain, Johan Heitman, the 87 crew ran onto the rocks beneath the castle. Soon afterwards, Thomas Crosby died suddenly and the rumour went around that he had been poisoned. His widow, Lady Margaret, then quickly lodged a claim of £4,500 against the Danes for salvage and the loss of her husband. A legal battle ensued during which the tower containing the silver was put in armed guard. Eight months went by, then one night in June, a gang of about 60 armed men with blackened faces surrounded the Crosby house, shot two sentries, broke into the tower and took away the chest of bullion on a cart. Lady Margaret was implicated in the robbery and charges were brought against various individuals. A nephew, Thomas Crosby, a colonel of the 19th Regiment, was convicted and outlawed. However, another, Arthur Crosby, the Commissioner of Customs in Kerry, was acquitted. Another man hanged himself in Tralee Jail, and another offered to tell the whole story in return for his release, but was found dead, presumed poisoned, in his lodgings in Dublin. The majority of the silver, with an estimated value of £20,000, which is about £2 million in today's money, was never recovered, and some people believe it still remains hidden on the Balahaig estate. In 1809, Colonel James Crosby employed the renowned architects Richard and William Vitruvius Morrison to build a new Balahaig castle. William produced the design for the house, at that time he was just 15 years old. The Colonel's son, Pierce Crosby, inherited the estate which had a problem with his wife, Elizabeth Sandys. In 1831, shortly after they married, she started bestowing her favours on the stable lads. Following a row with her husband, she eloped to the continent with one of the grooms and was never heard of again. It took Pierce 15 years to get an order presuming her dead so that he could marry again. The Crosbys continued on at Balahai Castle for a further century. A little east of the castle can be found the Crosby Mausoleum, the burial place of many family members. It bears the Crosby coat of arms, a snake entwined around three swords, on the side that faces the castle. Just north of the mausoleum is the grave of Colonel James Crosby, grandson of James Crosby who built the castle. He died in 1897. The reason for this separate grave is supposedly that he converted to Catholicism shortly before his death and did not want to be buried with the rest of his family who were Protestant. The demise of Balahai Castle came during the Troubles of 1921, when the castle was deliberately set on fire by the IRA. The burnt out shell was then abandoned. In June of 1962, during a holiday in Balahaig, Captain P. D. O'Donnell explored the castle rooms and took a number of photographs of the burnt out rooms. The day went by without any remarkable occurrence. However, when the film was developed, a person could be clearly seen in one of the photographs holding a sword and dressed in 18th century clothing, complete with tie boots and a hat. Close examination of the film by experts did not reveal any tampering, double exposure or any plausible scientific explanation for the ghostly figure, which appeared to be one of the Danish crew from the Golden Lion, wrecked off Balahaig Strand more than 200 years earlier. So there we have it guys, the history surrounding Balahaig Castle. If any of you ever plan on taking a trip to County Kerry, be sure to bring your camera, check the ocean and look out for Sea King's Mermaids. You might even get lucky enough to see the ghost from the Golden Lion. This is Jay from Our Legends. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, good night and good luck.